Once again, Jesus, I love you. Yeah. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Sing a song of Holy Spirit, please. Let us all ask the Holy Spirit to fill us. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to anoint us. Yes. If you want, you can stand and sing Holy Spirit. two days and this is the third day we have been reflecting in the morning session something very important the first day we reflected about what is grace because every day we pray numerous times Hail Mary full of grace and what is grace so from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the teaching of the Holy Catholic Church says grace is the participation of divine life into human life. 
1997. Grace is a participation in the life of God. It introduces into the intimacy of the Trinitarian life. So, you can say like this, if you like, you can act with me, take your two hands like this, please. Left hand is our human life, right hand is God's life. Yes, right hand coming from above, do like this, yes. And God's life, God has come down. God became man and entered into man's life. God's life entered into man's life and transformed man's life into God's life. So, we were human beings, now we are, now we are children of God. <laughs> So this is grace. So grace is participation of divine life into human life, transforming human life into divine life. So that is the first prayer we all pray. And that is what happened in the Immaculate Conception of Blessed Mother, that this grace worked even when she was in her mother's womb so that that grace filled her and that grace redeemed her that no original sin entered into her. So it's a long teaching but so, Christian life is a life in grace. So, we have through baptism. So, the next sentence says, By baptism, the Christian participates in the grace of Christ. Some of the church fathers teach us, Mary is full of grace. From the very first moment, she received full of grace. But about us, for us, it, we don't receive the first moment full of grace. We receive in stages. These are the teaching of the Sun Fathers. And by the way, today is the great, the feast of a Saint, uh, one of our favorite and great church fathers, Saint John Chrysostomos. It is his teaching. He says, Mary received the grace in fullness in the very first moment. But we receive, don't, we don't receive fullness in the first moment. We receive step by step. As an example, in the baptism we receive grace. That is not in fullness, but then we have the confirmation. Then we have the Eucharist. So when we receive Eucharist, we receive the fullness. Some Eastern churches, we, even as child, along with the baptism, we have been given other, all the three sacraments. So even though it is not together, it goes once upon one, one upon one. Because baptism is first that open the door to all other sacraments. So first is baptism. Then confirmation. And then as we uh, in Eastern churches <coughs> then we receive after that in that day itself we can receive the as a little child they can receive the first Holy Communion. Because the teaching of the Eastern Church is when Jesus said, let the children come to me. So when they are baptized, that is the time they are in the most holy 
situation. That is the best time to receive Jesus. But yet, when they grow up, they have to be educated about the Eucharist. Then again they receive, which is known as the solemn reception of the Eucharist, not First Holy Communion. The First Holy Communion happens while they receive the baptism. So that is Eastern liturgical tradition. In Western liturgical tradition, baptism, that is the first. Then after some years, confirmation. Then after some years, after proper formation and training, uh, after confession, we receive Holy Communion. Okay, so we were understanding the grace. And also we learned from the paragraph 2565 in Catechism that uh, that is relating to prayer. Prayer means it's in a constant communion with God. So it says in 2565, the grace of the kingdom is the union of the entire holy and royal trinity with the whole human spirit. The grace of the kingdom is, again, the union of the entire holy and royal trinity with the whole human spirit. So, our human spirit has a capacity to contain God. So imagine how big is our, 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 where is it, something I can show you. Yeah, it's okay. That, okay, okay. this is the, most holy trinity, this is our soul. Let's imagine, our soul. Our soul, God created in such a way, it has a capacity to receive God. <laughs> Understand? Yes. God created our soul in such a way that it is a dwelling place of God. It's a dwelling place of God. We are very, very precious people. So that is how we have to grow in faith. Grow in faith means grow in understanding about our relationship with God and what way God is, how is the revelation about God, the knowledge about God. Okay, so the grace of the kingdom is the union of the entire holy and royal trinity with the whole human spirit. All this we learned on the first day, but for those who have come new today, I'm just uh, doing it again. And also those who heard it, it is sweet to hear it again and again. <laughs> because it is so sweet to understand how great God has created us. Okay. Now, another important point we learned is through baptism, the Lord has given us the threefold anointing of Jesus. That is, in paragraph 1268 in Catechism teaches us that in baptism, every believer, the baptism have become, the baptized have become a living stone to be built into a spiritual house to be holy 
to be a holy priesthood. By baptism, they share in the priestly priesthood of Christ in his prophetic and in his royal mission. So we must know Jesus is king of kings, he is the high priest and he is the prophet. So that is why when Magi, that is the three kings, came to visit the newborn king, they brought special presents to present to this little king. What were they? Gold, frankincense and mira. So that shows this little child in the manger is a king. So gold pertaining to the king, a present to the king. And frankincense pertaining to the priesthood. And mira pertaining to the prophet. And in the Old Testament, no one had these three anointings. Even King David had two anointings, kingly and prophetic. No priesthood. Abraham had two anointings, priestly and prophetic. No king. So, Together, Abraham and David together comes into Jesus. That is how in the genealogy, according to Matthew, it is written, genealogy of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. So, these are all we have learned from the Church Father's teaching, which is known as Katena Aurea. Okay. So, our point now is, yesterday we got a prophecy that every baptized, every one of us have these three anointings. But yet, we are sinners, we have many sinfulness, but we will, the Lord has taken over all our sinfulness and redeemed us through his incarnation, through his passion, death and resurrection. So, salvation, when we think, oh, Jesus died on the cross to save us, that is very simple way to understand. But in a more detailed way, how Jesus saved us on the cross, We must know it begins from incarnation. So we say in the credo, he became man for what? To save us. He became man to save us. So what happened when he became man? Oh, exactly I got it. This is another gift for me. 461, the incarnation, taking up St. John's expression, the word became flesh, the church calls incarnation. St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. But in one word that the teaching of the church is that is called incarnation. And what happened in that? The fact that the Son of God, this is very important word. Everybody, those who are noting down, pay attention. Those who are listening, pay attention. That the Son of God assumed a human nature. He assumed human nature. He had no human nature. He, he was 
God and he was Word. Word, the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, who is Word. Spirit, invisible. But that invisible Son of God, invisible Word, took our human nature in the womb of Our Lady. So that is where our presence in Medjugorje and all our devotion to Mary is very important. Mary, but yet Mary is not a co-redeemer. Redemption is done only through God, not a creature. Mary is the mother of God, but yet she is like us, a creation, not God. So it is for us to understand that word is God. Word, that is the son of God. But he took our human nature. If you understand this, then it is very easy to understand the redemption. Whose human nature he took? Ours. Whose human nature? All of us. The whole humanity. Amen. That is where, why, why Pope is going to those Muslim countries? <laughs> People are asking. Why, why Pope is so much love with these Muslim countries? <laughs> Because he is looking through the eyes of Christ. Amen. Jesus is not a private property of Christians alone. He is God. He is the creator of this whole humanity. And that whole humanity is like one person, like in Adam. Adam is not only one person, but in Adam the whole humanity is there. That is why Adam's sin become the sin of the whole humanity. That is in Catechism 404. 404. There you go. See, I open, I get it. See, how did the sin of Adam become the sin of all his descendants? The whole human race is in Adam as one body of one man. See that. Is it good information or what? Is it good thing we are learning this? <laughs> It's very thing. We always say, oh, original sin, original sin. Somebody says, oh, sometime, many years back, when Adam did something, how can that come to you? No, 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 don't believe this. These are the ways so many people are teaching this time. But original sin is really a truth. It is a truth. We must know why all of us have sin. It is fully not our fault. It is a sin originated in Adam and spread it into whole humanity. So, many people interpret it wrongly Say, how can that man sin affect today? Even those who are baptized, even after baptism, there remains a concupiscence, a little inclination to sin. Why Holy Father Pope Francis, when he, he took papacy, there was a big interview and all the things. So, uh, the interviewer asked him, asked him, asked him, 
Who is this Bergoglio? Who is this Georg Bergoglio? That is Pope Francis's name, you know. Cardinal Georg Bergoglio. He is a sinner. <laughs> that was his answer. He is a sinner, but because of the grace of God, God called him to be Pope. He say he was for confession. Why? Because even after, even if he is a holy father, still the concupiscence because of the original sin still continue in us, which we have to fight against. We have to struggle. So, the whole human race is in Adam as one body of one man. By this unity of human race, all men are implicated in Adam's sin, as all are implicated in Christ's justice. So, in Christ, all <coughs> children of Adam are implicated as one person. Understand? So, the whole humanity in Adam is like one person. So, also, the whole humanity is in Christ as one person. And when we know this, we will have love for all other religion people. We see some, some, of, some of the other religion people are doing some terrorist thing. But that is not the... Uh, yeah, that is because of their, their uh, sinfulness and uh, result of the original sin. We cannot... We have to save them. How to save them? How to help them? So that is why Jesus said, love your enemy. Pray for those who persecute you. So, Holy Father, you know, sometimes people tell me, Thomas Paul, you are old now. You should not do so much of work, carrying all these things every day, setting up and going all over. My only reference point is Holy Father. I tell you. I tell you. Look at him. At this old age, with only one leg, with hip boy pain, with knee pain, with walking sticks and wheelchair. Imagine what a big tour he's making now going to all over the world. He is our reference. We will have all the sufferings. With the sufferings, we must do something beautiful for God. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I am... <laughs> Okay, so the, in the Incarnation, the Lord God assumed a human nature in order to accomplish our salvation. Paragraph 461, eh? this is 461. You write down these things and uh, this is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. This is the official teaching of the church, which is not only, it is known as Catechism of Catholic Church, but its official name is Fide Depositum, Deposit of Faith and Apostolic Constitution. This is the constitution of the Catholic Church. <coughs> and I have to tell you, more than 30 years I am learning this and teaching this. 30 years. <laughs> Therefore, for me, it is almost by heart. I can say in which number where it is written, just like quoting Bible. When I came to Europe, when I came to Germany, Austria, the Lord said to me, first thing, teach 
catechism and Bible together. Amen. You have heard a lot of not good news about Germany, correct? The reason is there is no catechism teaching neither in the church nor in the school. See, in our India we have in the church there is a regular, every Sunday we call it Sunday school or every Sunday there is a regular catechism teaching for the children. But in Austria, Germany, Switzerland, it is not there. In the time of Hitler, he said, oh, we will teach in the school. And he engaged religion teachers. The religion teachers need not have to be Catholic. They teach all religion. They are not uh, teaching according to the Catholic teaching. So now, what we should do? We must learn ourselves. So after Second Vatican Council, the church made, a, a, there was synod of bishops. Several, every four years, all the bishops meet in Rome to review the situation and what we have to do. So every time that Synod has a special theme. So after Second Vatican Council, Second Vatican Council was the great event in the whole church. Nearly 5,000 of the bishops and cardinals and theologians, nearly 5,000 met, met in Rome nearly three years in different sessions and they first time prayed all together with the Holy Father, O oh Lord, give us a new Pentecost, a renewal in the church. When Pope Benedict, sorry, Pope John Paul II, when he received the inspiration that we have to have a Vatican Council, everybody was wondering, what is he talking? What is he going to do? So he called some of the key persons in the uh, papal house and cardinals and theologians who had responsible. He took, took, he took them in, in, his, in his papal residence and he took all of them to a window, you know, the pap pope's window where he is giving the Sunday Angelus. And he told someone, you please open that window. So it was a winter time. As they opened the window, cold, fresh wind rushed into the room. Imagine. He said, this is what Holy Spirit want in the church. <laughs> Very clear. This is what the Holy Spirit want in the church. Fresh wind, a new wind, that the Holy Spirit will help us to renew the whole church. Imagine. The council began in 62, 63, 64, 65. And now it is 60 years. So next year Jubilee is also Jubilee of the Vatican, 60 years of the council. But tell me how many of us or how many of you read at least one document of that? <laughs> This is what the Holy Father is asking. We celebrate jubilees, jubilees, jubilees. But the fruit of the council is still not has come into our people. Okay, so after the council, several synod. The first synod was on evangelization. And after that came a teaching. The name of that teaching is Evangeli Nunshandi. You can write it down. This is something every one of us can, should have it like a pocket book. Evangeli Nunchanti. 
Even recently, Pope Francis was telling on evangelization, he said, this is the best reference book on evangelization. And he said, I read it and reread it even now, this document. I tell you, it's very valid. Pope Paul VI, it is after the Vatican Council, the whole newness of the spirits is after the Bishop Synod is in this. And next Bishop Synod was on catechism. Actually, I wanted to say that. How to teach faith to our little children, little ones and the adolescent people. A Bishop Synod, that is after four years of preparation, all the responsible bishops from every region come with responsible people on the dicastery of the catechism, directorate of the catechism. And they pray and deliberate how to imbibe these new teachings we received in the Vatican Council into catechism. And that was a beautiful document called Catechesi Tradande. Catechesi Tradande. That is Catechism Today, Catechesi Tadande. And in Catechesi Tadande, there is a revolutionary teaching, which is a, a, a change is needed in the Catechism teaching from the traditional what we have been learning. We have been learning Catechism beginning from creation, correct? God created all the things, you know. That is our traditional catechism. But Catechism Tradande, day, after Second Vatican Council, teaches us it should be changed. We should begin from Christ. From Christ. Christ. That is, Christ means from the Incarnation. Because He is the first of all creation. And in Catechesi Tadande, paragraph 5 says there is a new terminology developed, Christocentrality. Christocentrality. Because Jesus himself says you have only one teacher. Amen. He himself said, I am the way truth and the life. So he is the creator of the whole creation. He is the invisible, he is the visible God of the invisible. So, in fact, I am making an online catechism school according to this teaching. So here, what is inspired to me is it, it fits very well. What is our general prayer every day? Angelus. Where we begin? Angel of the Lord declare unto Mary, Mary conceived through Holy Spirit. Correct? What is that? It is a Christocentrality. That is, the angel said to Mary, you will conceive and you will bear a son. You must call him Jesus. So in my, this first standard catechism that I am making, Mary is praying a psalm, a psalm prophecy about the incarnation. She was praying. And then the angel came, Hail Mary, full of grace. Mary was shocked. She turned. Do not be afraid, you and all that, uh, uh, what we call annunciation happens. And the angel went away. And Mary was in such a hesitancy that word become flesh. She's hearing an echo. You will conceive. I do not know a man. 
Holy Spirit will come upon you. It is happening. The con conceiving is taking place. All that I am showing in animation. Yeah. Animation film. And she is having such an experience of God. Her heart is crying. Jesus. You will call him Jesus. Already she started calling him Jesus. Jesus. Oh, my soul proclaims the great Magnificat comes. Magnificat did not come just like that. Somebody is written. Magnificat came out of this experience of the incarnation in her. Few lines. And then that video ends. That is this type of a classroom. And the teacher is telling the little children are sitting. Children, have you seen this video? You liked it? Yeah. What have you seen? What have you heard? Angel, Mother Mary. Okay, what did Angel say to Mary? All that they speak a little bit. Ah, you know, children, what is the meaning of word Jesus? They do not know. Where from the, what is the meaning of the word Jesus? So I say from Catechism 430, Jesus is a Hebrew word which means God saves. God saves. It is a Hebrew word. So I added a little bit more in that. There is another Hebrew word from the very first chapter of the chapters of the Bible that is Adma, 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 Adam. That is a Hebrew word which means from the earth, from the earth. Jesus is a Hebrew word which means God saves. Adam is a Hebrew word which means from the earth. See, very easy to understand now. This Adma from the earth, so he is turning to the earth. <laughs> and to redeem this earthly nature came Jesus, God saves. Came from, not from the earth. So when I wrote all this uh, 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 script, I mean the first script and I, it is on an online session, so many people are participating. I told them, you can give me a feedback. How do you feel this? So some of them said, oh, this is too heavy for the first standard children. Will, it, will they understand it? So I said, so they are mothers carrying children. So I prayed. I am living in a perpetual adoration center. 24 hours we have adoration. My adoration time every day is morning 3.30 to 5 o'clock. <laughs> every day I am there in the chapel with the Lord. I say, Lord, now the church teaching says that Christocentrality, we learn from Christ, we begin from Christ, the catechism should bring him from Jesus and Christ. And then you know what Jesus said? He said, you have done it right. Don't worry. People say how children, children don't understand. You see, pay attention. Then Jesus said, I was in the house of that widow in 9, Luke chapter 7, that widow's only son died. She is in trauma, she is in pain. I went there. I wiped her tears. But what can console her? She should get back her son. I turned to the coffin. People were carrying this dead body of the son in the coffin. 
already funeral procession started. I touched that coffin. They stood there. Now remember what I did. I said, young man, I said to your race. Now Jesus is asking me, Young man, I said to you, erase. He rose. He rose, is it because he understood? He's asking, Jesus is asking us, this dead young man, Jesus is telling to this dead young man, young man, I said to you, erase. And he rose. <coughs> Luke chapter 7, 40. Jesus is asking, he rose, is it because he understood? No. This is the type of catechism we need. This is the type of teaching we need. We have to, we have to believe that the word of Jesus, when we speak, he himself is speaking. And he, and his word has power even to penetrate into a dead person and to give new life. He came to the house of Jairus. Everybody says, the child is dead. Why do you trouble the master? And Jesus said, don't worry. The child is sleeping. Come. Jairus and his wife and a couple of the apostles. All right. And Jesus took this child's hand and said, Talita come, ankle erase. And she came out. <laughs> Is it because she understood? No. Jesus came in the house of Lazarus. It is much different. He was dead. Four days are over. What happened on fourth day? The doctors tell me. In the Decay. Decay. Body decays. That is why he came on the fourth day. He is a very close friend of the family of Martha and from childhood onward they were friends, you know. But he did not come when Martha sent a message that you are the one whom you love is sick. They thought immediately he will come and heal him. But he is totally a healer. That's what you have to understand. He has come not simply to heal us. He has come to redeem us, to reverberate us, to regenerate us, to transform us. Amen. All our dead nature can be glorified nature. So he came on the fourth day and they said, Oh, if you would have been here, our brother would not have died. He cried with them, but he said, your brother will resurrect. Oh yeah, we know at the end time he will resurrect. It is then he says, I am the resurrection. He did not say, I will be the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. Now, I am not only a healer. People think he is the son of a carpenter from Nazareth, a prophet. No. He says the greatest declaration in the whole Bible, which says, I am the resurrection. Amen. Resurrection and life. And then they said, oh, where is he buried? So Martha says, I believe. And he came to the tomb. Take away the stone. <laughs> Oh, then again Martha said, Lord, it's already four days. It may be stinky. Yes, 
it is thinking but the lord said martha did i not tell you if you believe you will see the glory of god he says yes, yes lord i believe this is what we have to believe and he said father i thank you you always hear my prayer now i say this loudly so that everyone who are here believe that you sent me lazarus come out did lazarus understood this word <laughs> that's the point lazarus body is already decaying so our normal education is on understanding correct our formation we learn engineering science doctor is to understand but the power of god is beyond our understanding even the decayed man is risen we may be sinful even our bodies with so much sin and like a decayed body like a leper which cannot be healed but the lord's power of resurrection now let us praise we conclude now thank you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah lord shandara halabala hiya labara halaba kurakira oh lord now the lord is healing somebody the healing power is coming the healing power is touching somebody is receiving healing it is also as the lord said he confirmed the teaching through the signs and wonders now i can see a person's heart which had a, a, a difficulty in the heart that heart is having some some difficult situation the pulse is uh, erratic something and the lord is healing a person with a heart problem erratic pulse rate is it okay erratic pulse rate yeah exactly i am hearing the word erratic pulse rate the lord is healing someone it may not be it may be someone here or someone who will be watching this video later shalami kira lakara mikira shalama hara lazarus come out in the rakira yeah man i said to you arise talita ko oh lord we thank you lord we praise you lord praise you lord shandala whoever is listening this video experience the power of the word of god power of the word of god is beyond our understanding it is beyond our understanding even a dead man even a dead person who is decayed is raising up through the power of the word of god that is our take away this is what we have to take we have to believe today we are going for holy mass exactly this is what is happening in the holy mass in the holy mass the first part is the word of god that word will penetrate into our life transforming and the second part is the passion death and resurrection that our present situation our sinfulness our ugliness whatever may be we are we can be trans formed just let it happen and believe oh lord today today help us to experience mother mary was in the wedding at cana what was that what happened there the water changed to wine that is the same transformation water is a material but it is completely changed to another substance amen Amen. Shandala halabala halabala.
uh, we go for holy mass and we come back in uh, we start the next session in 11:30 11:30 it is now 9:30 so 10:30 11:30 after 2 hours all those okay